Hello there, welcome to Yo Sacro. This video is from the space series and here I'm going to show you how I created this planet. So in the part one I've already shown you how to create custom channels and use them in post render. So this video I'm going to show you a couple of techniques I used while creating the texture for the planet itself. So let's get started. Now for creating this texture, let me go ahead and remove a few of the operations here so that my viewer is not uh, burdened. So I'm going to just go ahead and look at the basic composite here. I'll just change the color of this node. Now uh, here you can see the diffuse values which I have and now I can go ahead and add anything I want in here and it will automatically take care of it. So let me go ahead and take a constant. And this constant, I'll give it any color I want. So let's say I wanted the planet to be obviously somewhere in the blue shade. So I'll just take on a blue shade for the planet and I'll add a noise. So now I'll take a look at it and I want the noise to just change the variation, uh, give some variations in the blue texture itself. So let me choose the same blue again and I'll saturate it a bit more and darken it. So as you can see, we just took the same blue color and edited it a little bit. Now, for creating textures, new, uh, basically because it's node based and it has a lot of this noise procedural textures, I'm just going to make use of them to try to get as much detail as possible. You can probably skip uh, another 5 minutes if you uh, don't really want to go through all of this. So let's just see. I have this basic blue color texture which I have done, but let's say you wanted to actually do something which is uh, uh, land based. So I can go ahead and change this uh, like a terrestrial like earth. So it's going to have brownish tint for all of the regions. So I'll just go ahead and change that here. Okay, now first thing I'm going to do is most of my noise is going to be set on turbulence. The reason being turbulence gives you much more natural looking noise, what you might find in nature. So I'll just set it to that. Now as you can see when I'm changing these values it's giving me this uh, nice looking uh, result but one thing to note uh, right now I'm working with this uh, 2k uh, footage I don't really want my texture to be that size I want it to be uh, let's say about um, some wrap around the sphere so I want it to be 4k on the height and I want it to be 8k on the width so let me go ahead and tell a new one I'll call it texture and I'll tell that it has to be Okay, so basically it's a uh, full texture. Okay, it has to be in reverse. Okay, width is this and the height is this. Let me just hit OK and this is my entire planet texture. I want to be working with the proxy so that my computer does not hang. So let me set that to proxy. And I'm actually also going to go ahead and uh, tell my proxy scale is 0.25 so that it's faster. Okay, so now if I zoom in, you can see there is a lot of detail. If I turn off the proxy, you can see there is a lot of detail to be working with. So here in the noise, I can go change the opacity to tell exactly how much of the details I want and keep setting it up. Now, I have tried to edit the landmass. I don't want the color to be that varying, so let me edit that a bit. And now I'm going to add in a little bit more noise into it. And this noise is going to give me greenish tint. So let me set that there and uh, I'll tell it has to be greenish. I want it to be dark green. And as you can see it's merging exactly with the uh, old texture which I had. So I'm going to go ahead and change the Z value so it randomly changes its position. I'll go ahead and also edit it the same way. Uh, this is basically like let's say vegetation. So I'm just changing that and I want it to be larger patches. So I'm just changing that too large changes on it. So let's say this is the actual landmass. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in some clouds on top or basically some light clouds first and then some additional clouds on top. So again I'll take noise and by default it gives me white so I'm going to use that as it is. As you can see it gives me this nice cloud like results immediately. I'll just go ahead and try to edit it a little bit. So these are like small clouds present everywhere and if you remember it's exactly lined up according to the old texture which we had so it's something like uh, ice capped mountains and such so I'm just leaving it as it is. I'll add another noise on top of this. I'll set that one to turbulence too and as you can see it's kind of continuing from the old texture which we already had so 
and I'm just going to change the Z value a little bit to make sure it's not going to overlap anything else okay so I've done all of these settings now let me go ahead and connect this into my 3d section and look at the results and I can see the this doesn't really show me a lot of the difference but it does give me this change here and this change is mainly because the alpha is changing so I don't really want the end result to have alpha inside it so under the shuffle node I can tell that RGBA alpha should not go into alpha alpha should be pure white that does not seem to have worked okay that's not in the diffuse channel I want it to be in RGBA alpha white perfect once that I have it I can come back to the operations here which have completed come out and you can see the kind of results I'm getting here so you can see the planet exists there are a few cloud regions over here but the cloud really is not that easy to see so I can go ahead and edit it in real time and try to see exactly how I can improve upon so this is the one I'll increase that So let's say this is the result I have. Now if I want to change anything, let's say I wanted obviously the planet to be blue in the end. So I can go ahead and actually do all the edits over here. So with this grain, I can go ahead and use a multiply value. I'll just go till it has to be bluish in tone. So as you can see, the entire planet changes its tone. Obviously, I don't want the entire planet to go completely blue in color. If I remove this cloud layer, you can see what happened. I can go ahead and tell that this has to be mixed in with the original colors of the planet so it has a blend now also as you can see the cloud cover which I have if I add in the additional layer it's a bit too much so I also I'm going to edit this so it's like the second layer of clouds so I'll just go edit that a bit so as you can see this is the planet I have I can go edit it how much ever I want till I'm satisfied Okay, let's say I really like this planet as it is now. As you can see, the seam is exactly visible in the front. So for this, I'll go to the sphere and here I can change it to, let's say, a few degrees. So it's exactly on the opposite side now. Also, another thing I just realized, I wanted the entire composite to be exactly in the reverse direction, meaning the lighting had to be coming in from this direction, not this. So basically, I reverse the composite, whereas I don't really mind it. It's okay for me. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Now, if I come back to the final halo section, you can see that the halo is coming up, but you're losing pretty much all the details inside. So what I'm going to do is make use of the fill lighting which I had. To edit the value so if I go ahead and use a gamma you can see what exactly I have here you have bright values in the center and darker values at the edge so I'm going to use that to edit the halos so these regions I'm going to edit them so let's go ahead I'll take a merge node I'll connect the merge here I'll take an invert now what I'm going to get is basically this inverted uh, value in which black is there in the center and whites are there at the edge but it's not perfect so I'm going to go use a grade node on this I'm going to pause my viewer and on this grade node I can tell which is supposed to be my black region so I can choose here and once that is done I can tell my white points so I can choose here so basically black and white are chosen and now if I um, pause it you can see black to white region which has come in I can use a gamma to tell exactly how I want this to be affected so basically have this entire region done so now I want this multiplied on top of this so coming back what I'll do now is from here I'll tell multiply and basically I get only this rim so this is what the multiply is doing it's getting rid of all the halo from within the center of the planet so all I'm going to do is use this as my overlay so without it I had this now with it I have this beautiful looking result next I'm going to use the same result over here for this multiply or for a merge over here too so connecting it there a pipe goes in there so this one sets to multiply and now the result of this is what I'm going to be using 
So coming out, you can see this is the result I have. Now obviously I want the halo around the planet to actually have a similar result to whatever is the planet color. So to do that, you can, you remember this grade node which I have added over here. So if I come back to the grade node, you can see it's pure white in color. So what I can do is go ahead and change the color of this grade node or over here in the gain region, I can change the color of it to any color I want. So once I've done that, you can see that color changes over here too. So all I have to do is set the color which I want on the edges over here. So let's say I want this blue here and I want a different blue over there or if you want to I can give any color I want so it's up to you. So choose any color which you like or which makes the composite look better and also I can see that the fill light is pretty black here I can't really see a lot of details so if I want I can go edit that too uh, but what I want to do is actually edit the rim light so let's go to the rim light I'll increase the intensity so you can see what happens okay and here I'll increase the fill light value so I have a bit more detail okay done so now I have this planet and as you can see it has a lot of detail. Now if I want to actually see the full results for the planet I can take off the proxy and it will render out the full resolution for the planet with a lot more detail from the noise nodes than I actually had before. So as you can see it has a lot of detail in the noise and you can see it has pretty much the similar results as we have on the earth with all the terrain and such. So this is what I have. Now the first thing to note is that usually when you have a terrain you are going to have some lighting uh, information even on the terrain so you can't really just go about and add uh, flat textures so I need some kind of embossed maps on them too so I'm just going to go ahead and add one of them. So I'll just go ahead and take an embossed node and connect that in here. Let's just look at this now. You can see the alpha has a lot of values because of all the noise we have applied. So if I come back to the embossed, it's going to make use of this alpha to create this embossed effect. So let's go ahead and tell we want to increase the amount of this embossed. You can also change the angle which we are going to change uh, looking at the final composite. You can use all these different values to try and see exactly which is going to give us the best result. So let me just pause the video, try to see which is going to give me a good result and come back. Okay, so I've just gone ahead, added in a lot of embos and you can see the alpha channel has a lot of detail in here. So now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and uh, use a simple another grade node. So I'll just take the grade and if I come back to this grade, you can see the uh, colors, uh, color values are actually pretty normal. So I can use this alpha as a mask and start changing values here to create the same uh, embos effect over here. So as you can see, it's quite easy to do. So I'll just go ahead and edit this a little bit. So the alpha is going to be the mask which I'm going to use to create this. As you can see, it creates a quite neat looking one. And if I remove the proxy, it's going to give me a lot more detail. So make sure you check without the proxy to see exactly what results you're going to get. Okay, I got one result so if I enable and disable it you can see that it gives me a lot of detail and also along with this I'm going to use a merge node and um, I'm going to go ahead and hard light this so for that I need a shuffle and I'm going to tell the alpha has to go into RGBA. Now that's going to be my A channel, I'll come back in here. And over here, I'll tell I want this to be on soft light. I'll see whether hard, hard light or soft light gives me the best results. Let me set it back to proxy. Okay. Okay, you can see it looks more like bubble wrap. I don't really want that. Set it to overlay. Let's check that. Okay, so. With the entire embos added, this is the result I'm getting. As you can see, it gives me a lot of this lighting and depth into the scene. So once that is done, then the clouds are added on top of it. So pretty much that is done. So let's come back to the final composite now. Here. And I want to make sure it looks like the uh, embos is acting in the right direction. So for that, let's just disable the clouds for now. 
and let's turn off proxy so it's giving me the full result and coming to the embos I'll go ahead and try to change this value to a larger one as you can see whatever is facing this direction is actually lit so that's pretty neat I actually have it uh, going along in the right direction so I don't really mind the result so I'm just gonna keep it as it is and enable the clouds which we had so let me go back to proxy okay so I have this and going to the final I have my planet completed now to do the animation all I have to do is just move the camera and move the spear uh, rotate the spear so let me just quickly finish that too so coming to the camera I can directly tell okay this one is going to be at around let's say 9th or let's say 10 okay also I want to make sure I'm working with HD I've not actually set my project yet and I just want this to be 240 frames okay with that set let me go into 3d view I'll go back to the camera and set this in I can turn on a couple of my uh, settings here to see if I actually want to uh, know exactly what's happening so I'll just go ahead and set this here or let me just do my final composite which I wanted I'll set the planet here I'll make it smaller Okay, uh, let me just go ahead. I'll create a new viewer for this. Okay, now with this viewer, I can actually edit the settings. Let's work one at a time. It's getting just simply unnecessarily complicated. Okay, so that's the main light. Then I have the default uh, light here I actually want it to be exactly in the same position as a camera so it is in the origin so I'll just connect that to the camera so it gives me the default fill light so no more edits there now coming to this light I need to make sure it's only give me the rim values and nothing else okay so now with all the lights on you can see yeah I have the planet ready okay perfect now I want to animate the camera going through it so over here let me set the camera in the first frame selecting the cam I'll go set key I only want it to translate I don't want anything else so here I'll actually go ahead and move it a bit further away okay now here and to go to the end and just zoom in a very slow movement it's playing too slowly the reason being uh, the, all the maps which I have applied let me apply a checkerboard and uh, also coming to the spear I can tell I want it to be just textured so I can just see it so let's play it's actually updating two viewers at a time so this is also being updated so that's the reason it's kind of slow so you can see it's a very slow movement I'm pretty happy with it so let's use that I'll go ahead select the spear now I'll go ahead to the first frame I'll key this and as you know 80 is a frame at which it's exactly sitting there so I don't want to edit that so going further I'm going to rotate it more and let's say it rotates oops about 120 degrees or 130 degrees perfect done so now pretty much everything done let's come out to the final okay where is the other viewer I don't want this and reconnect the texture onto the planet and pause it okay so I have this done now if I go ahead and play this through the planet should slowly come towards the camera so that is done now all I need to do is add in a background in the scene so that no, there is a little bit more depth now the easiest way to add in a background in the scene is obviously to connect it to the BG node 
but if I do so it is going to go into the RGB channel which is not a very good idea so I need the entire background to be in a completely separate uh, plate itself so for this reason I'm going to go ahead create a card so this card is going to give me the background image so let me go ahead and look at this uh, toggle the screen on and over here taking the card I can use a Z value to create a card in the background and it's a bit too small right now so I'm going to go ahead and increase the scale of this card it should just cover the camera entirely so I have this card over there in the background now all I have to do is assign any image I want to it so what I'll do is go ahead and bring in a read node and I'll use the star field image I use for the asteroid uh, section so I'll just connect that in but now once I've connected it if I come back to the final output you might see there might there are a couple of issues okay so because the card is an actual object in the scene and also we have a couple of lights we can't really directly use a star field here so therefore I'm going to use the same method I used before with the shuffle I'm going to add in the shuffle and uh, let's set the mission to be going into stars I want the RGB going into the stars and RGB that itself I want it to be black so now what happens is RGB over here for the stars is black and it's in the stars channel so once I have this I can come out here and you can see only stars channels show the result and the rest have the actual objects within that so therefore what I can do is uh, once I have my entire object done I can finally composite the stars on top so you can see the alpha channel exists on the object here or I can come back here you can see the alpha channel actually exists so using this alpha channel I can composite the stars on top so let me do that over here so this one has the alpha so using that let me take a merge I'll connect that here I'll connect both of them here on this merge please remember that you also have to merge all channels you shouldn't just merge one or two so all the channels are being merged so on this merge I want the A channel to be the stars channel which is being merged so coming to this you can see the stars are being merged on top and because it's on the over operation it's pretty much going to take care of everything for you itself so I'll just go ahead and leave it at over or if I want I can set it to screen too and basically the stars have come I can see the stars kind of look a bit too dull the main reason for this is the stars over here actually do look as such so if you go ahead and set it to a higher res or change the resolution over here it might uh, give a better result so pretty much this is it and this is the entire composite so if I go to the final version here uh, set to RGBA you can see the planet is here and the stars are there in the background now all I have to do is grade and render the whole thing out so pretty much that's the entire video so let me just summarize the whole thing uh, most of the time when you're trying to render something in Nuke uh, in 3D especially you can make use of channels so add everything you want into separate channels like we did here we added it into the diffuse channel and then finally make use of the same channels you did to create the composite so it gives you much better looking results and you can have much more control over the object that you're working on if you do it this way so pretty much that's the video so I have gone ahead and rendered out the whole video as you can see the planet has a, a lot of detail it also has a slight uh, a layer of something which look like, looks like clouds now, the halo on the atmosphere is a bit overdone but I like it and also the stars in the background I have added a little bit of bluish tint even to those so this is a final version I have and pretty much everything was done within Nuke absolutely no external resources have been used except the stars which uh, if you want you can do even that in Nuke so uh, because this version is quite different from the one I did in the recording let me just go briefly explain uh, what changes are there so here in the Nuke script as you can see pretty much everything looks uh, the same so here uh, coming eyes you can see the initial color and the constant has changed I have gone ahead and changed a little bit of the colors on each one of these constants and I've added in a little slide this bump map kind of effect this is what gives you the terrain uh, feel 
Uh, this is all basic nuke so I'm not getting too much into it and I've also gone ahead and used a dish caching node because um, these uh, nodes which are being used here especially with the high resolution constant as you can see the constant is very large in size so I don't really want it to bog down the system so I'm going ahead and using a dish cache node here so that it goes ahead and caches it in then after that I have this light mask I have applied here which basically gives me this white cloud like uh, effect on top and then I go ahead and grade it a little bit just a few edits uh, main edit is basically clamping the black and white values so that there is nothing which is too bright and comes out wrong and then I go ahead and shuffle the whole thing and finally I render it out so here uh, as you saw previously I basically had the first default uh, planet and then I add in the stars I add in a particular for first halo I add in the second halo I add in a few additional channels I apply vector blur so basically I'm bringing in the motion vector channels from the top and adding in vector blur and I basically write out the scene so as you can see pretty easy to get this done and also have enough control to change anything I want like for example I can go ahead and tell I want to change the color of the halo I don't want it too blue so I can immediately go ahead change it and you can see it's pretty interactive so uh, that's it for this video okay so that pretty much brings us to the end of the tutorial now the first thing I'd like to tell is that I do know the final version I have shown and the one I have just created do not match the main reason for this is that I spent an extra half an hour creating the final version to make it look better and I did not want to make this video more boring than it is by twiddling around with the knobs so for those of you who are interested in the final version you can download the nuke script and see exactly how it was done mostly it's just color changes in the noise nodes so pretty much that's it for the entire video guys this was Eo Sakura and this video is from the space series on creating planets I showed you how to create custom channels render them out from nuke 3d and use them post render so I really hope you found this video useful I'll see you in the next one and goodbye